Minecraft is boring. This three-letter phrase has been plaguing the Minecraft community for the past several years. It even extends to a casual player base of fans. I mean, who wouldn't think that the game is boring when mob votes suck and the new content updates don't provide a whole lot of content, right? Is Minecraft boring? To answer this question, we need to look at a quick history of the game. November 6, 2014. Microsoft acquired Mojang for $2.5 billion. We all know about this. Notch, the creator of the game, stated that he didn't want the responsibility of owning a company with such global significance. And that's totally understandable. But this is about what Microsoft did with this new acquisition. After just over a year of radio silence about the game, version 1.9, the combat update, officially released. This update was massive. It brought end cities, elytras, a new combat system, the outer end, shulker shield, igloos, tipped arrows, the offhand, and a revamped ender dragon fight. At the time, this was the most beloved update that had been released. So what did Microsoft do with all this attention? They released the Frostburn update just four months later. One of the most disappointing updates of all time. All this update adds are polar bears, some new blocks, and a new zombie and skeleton variation. This became the trend. We would have an amazing update, but with every amazing update, there would be a mediocre one. Take for example, the aquatic update being paired with the world of color update, or the village and pillage update, followed by the buzzy bees update. Now we get into 2020 with the beloved nether update, followed by the caves and cliffs part 1 and 2 in 2021, the wild update in 2022, and finally, the trails and tales update in 2023. A lot of Minecraft players think that the recent updates have had a lack of content and don't change the game very much. They think Minecraft is getting boring because of the lack of new things being thrown in their face. Well, I disagree. Let's take a look at all the updates that have been released after the Nether update. Caves and Cliffs Part 1 brought us several new cave plants, the axolotl, glow squids, goats, copper, amethyst geodes, raw ores, candles, and not to mention all the deep slate blocks, and powdered snow I guess. It may not seem like much, but a lot of these features are really interesting and provide fun things to do like collect all the goat horns, breed for the blue axolotl, find geodes, make your signs and item frames light up, and lots of decoration. Caves and Cliffs Part 2 is where this really shines, adding completely overhauled world generation, complex and massive cave systems, changed ore distribution, increased the overworld build limit, completely new overworld music, and mob spawn changes. These two updates were originally supposed to release at the same time, but due to its development during COVID, it ended up being into two updates, only split by five months' time. Next is the Wild update, in which they added a deep dark biome to new caves, ancient cities, skulk, blocks, mangrove swamps, frogs, allays, and a few quality of life features like chest boats and recovery compasses. And finally, the Trails and Tales update with the archaeology system, the sniffers, ancient plants, camels, pottery, cherry blossom biomes and armor trims, bamboo blocks, and hanging signs. Coming soon, there will be 1.21, which we don't know too much about, but we do know that there will be a new structure called Trial Chambers, the Auto Crafter block, new copper blocks, and a new enemy mob called the Breeze. With all that being said, I don't think there's anything remotely close to a lack of content in the recent updates, especially when many of them add more features than a majority of previous updates ever did. So now that we have established that there isn't a lack of content in the recent updates, let's talk about how the new updates don't change the gameplay loop. I fail to see how Caves and Cliffs doesn't change the gameplay loop with completely new world generation, making the build limit 64 blocks higher, and making the world twice as deep, in which you are required to explore to get diamonds. In these caves, there's several new biomes with new mobs and blocks that are very useful for decoration and gameplay in general, and not to mention the ancient cities and mangrove swamps that are added in the wild update and the archaeology and armor trims added in the Trails and Tales update. Sure, these features aren't required to beat the game, just like almost all of the features aren't required to beat the game. So why are people only now saying Minecraft is boring? The answer is, it's not. It never got boring. Minecraft was never boring. The players got boring. The players are the ones that decided whether to use the new features or not. And the ones who think the game is boring are the ones who choose not to explore the new updates themselves and would rather content be thrown in their face, like games like Fortnite tend to do. Minecraft is not boring. You are.
Thank you so much for watching this video. It took some time to make, so a like would be really appreciated. I also have a community Discord server linked in the description, and you're absolutely welcome to join us there if you want. That's pretty much all I have to say here, so thanks again for watching, and peace.